Job's character and wealth. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless, upright, fearing God and turning away from evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. His possessions were seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, five hundred female donkeys, and very many servants. And that man was the greatest of all the men of the east. His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day, and they would send word and invite their three sisters to it and drink with them. When the days of feasting had completed their cycle, Job would send word to them and consecrate them, getting up early in the morning and offering burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, Perhaps my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Job did so continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a fence around him and his house and all that he has, on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But reach out with your hand now and touch all that he has. He will certainly curse you to your face. Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he is is in your power. Only do not reach out and put your hand on him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. Satan allowed to test Job. Now on the day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the female donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabines attacked and took them. They also killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, the Chaldeans formed three units and made a raid on the camels and took them, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people and they died, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job got up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground and worshipped. He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Despite all this, Job did not sin, nor did he blame God. Job loses his health. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man fearing God and turning away from evil. And he still holds firm to his integrity, although you incited me against him to ruin him without cause. Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. However, reach out with your hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh he will curse you to your face. So the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your power, only spare his life. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with severe boils from the sole of his foot to the top of his head. And Job took a piece of pottery to scrape himself while he was sitting in the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold firm your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You are speaking as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we actually accept good from God, but not accept adversity? Despite all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard about all this adversity that had come upon him, they came, each one from his own place, Elipaz that Monite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zephar the Naamathite. And they made an appointment together to come to sympathize with him and comfort him. When they looked from a distance and did not recognize him, they raised their voices and wept. And each of them tore his robe and they threw dust over their heads toward the sky. Then they sat down on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights, with no one speaking a word to him, for they saw that his pain was very great. Job's lament. Afterward Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. And Job said, May the day on which I was to be born perish, as well as the night which said, A boy is conceived. May that day be darkness. 
May God above not care for it, nor light shine on it. May darkness and black gloom claim it. May a cloud settle on it. May the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, may darkness seize it. May it not rejoice among the days of the year. May it not come into the number of the months. Behold, may that night be barren. May no joyful shout enter it. May those curse it who curse the day, who are prepared to disturb Leviathan. May the stars of its twilight be darkened. May it wait for light but have none, and may it not see the breaking dawn. Because it did not shut the opening of my mother's womb, or hide trouble from my eyes. Why did I not die at birth, come out of the womb and pass away? Why were the knees there in front of me, and why the breasts, that I would nurse? For now I would have lain down and been quiet. I would have slept then, I would have been at rest. With kings and counselors of the earth, who rebuilt ruins for themselves. Or with rulers who had gold, who were filling their houses with silver. Or like a miscarriage which is hidden, I would not exist, as infants that never saw light. There the wicked cease from raging, and there the weary are at rest. The prisoners are at ease together. They do not hear the voice of the taskmaster. The small and the great are there, and the slave is free from his master. Why is light given to one burdened with grief, and life to the bitter of soul, who long for death, but there is none, and dig for it more than for hidden treasures? Who are filled with jubilation, and rejoice when they find the grave? Why is light given to a man whose way is hidden, and whom God has shut off? For my groaning comes at the sight of my food, and my cries pour out like water. For what I fear comes upon me, and what I dread encounters me. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet, and I am not at rest, but turmoil comes. Elipaz says the innocent do not suffer. Then Elipaz that Manite responded, If one ventures a word with you, will you become impatient? But who can refrain from speaking? Behold, you have taught many, and you have strengthened weak hands. Your words have helped the stumbling to stand, and you have strengthened feeble knees. But now it comes to you and you are impatient. It touches you, and you are horrified. Is your fear of God not your confidence, and the integrity of your ways your hope? Remember now, whoever perished being innocent? Or where were the upright destroyed? According to what I have seen, those who plow wrongdoing, and those who sow trouble harvest it. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they come to an end. The roaring of the lion and the voice of the fierce lion, and the teeth of the young lions are broken out. The lion perishes for lack of prey, and the cubs of the lioness are scattered. Now a word was brought to me secretly, and my ear received a whisper of it. Amid disquieting thoughts from visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on people, dread came upon me, and trembling, and made all my bones shake. Then the spirit passed by my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. Something was standing still, but I could not recognize its appearance. A form was before my eyes. There was silence, then I heard a voice. Can mankind be righteous before God? Can a man be pure before his Maker? He puts no trust even in his servants. And he accuses his angels of error. How much more those who live in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed before the moth. Between morning and evening they are broken in pieces. Unregarded, they perish forever. Is their tent cord not pulled out within them? They die, yet without wisdom. God is just. Call now, is there anyone who will answer you? And to which of the holy ones will you turn? For irritation kills the fool, and jealousy brings death to the simple. I have seen the fool taking root, and I cursed his home immediately. His sons are far from safety, they are also oppressed at the gate, and there is no one to save them. The hungry devour his harvest, and take it to a place of thorns, and the schemer is eager for their wealth. For disaster does not come from the dust, nor does trouble sprout from the ground. For man is born for trouble, as sparks fly upward. But as for me, I would seek God, and I would make my plea before God, who does great and unsearchable things, wonders without number. He gives rain on the earth, and sends water on the fields, so that he sets on high those who are lowly, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He frustrates the schemes of the shrewd, so that their hands cannot attain success. He captures the wise by their uncleverness, and the advice of the cunning is quickly thwarted. By day they meet with darkness, and grope at noon as in the night but he saves from the sword of their mouth, and the poor from the hand of the strong. So the helpless has hope, and injustice has shut its mouth. Behold, happy is the person whom God disciplines, so do not reject the discipline of the Almighty. For he inflicts pain, and gives relief. He wounds, but his hands also heal. 
In six troubles he will save you. Even in seven, evil will not touch you. In famine he will redeem you from death, and in war, from the power of the sword. You will be hidden from the scourge of the tongue, and you will not be afraid of violence when it comes. You will laugh at violence and hunger, and you will not be afraid of wild animals. For you will be in league with the stones of the field, and the animals of the field will be at peace with you. You will know that your tent is secure, for you will visit your home and have nothing missing. You will also know that your descendants will be many, and your offspring is the grass of the earth. You will come to the grave at a ripe age, like the stacking of grain in its season. Behold this. We have investigated it, and so it is. Hear it, and know for yourself Job's friends are no help. Then Job responded, Oh if only my grief were actually weighed and laid in the balances together with my disaster. For then it would be heavier than the sand of the seas. For that reason my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, my spirit drinks their poison. The terrors of God line up against me. Does the wild donkey bray over his grass, or does the ox low over his feed? Can something tasteless be eaten without salt, or is there any taste in the juice of an alkanet plant? My soul refuses to touch them. They are like loathsome food to me. Oh, that my request might come to pass, and that God would grant my hope. Oh, that God would decide to crush me, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off. But it is still my comfort, and I rejoice in unsparing pain, that I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What is my strength, that I should wait? And what is my end, that I should endure? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh bronze? Is it that my help is not within me, and that a good outcome is driven away from me? For the despairing man there should be kindness from his friend, so that he does not abandon the fear of the Almighty. My brothers have acted deceitfully like a wadi, like the torrents of waters which drain away, which are darkened because of ice, and into which the snow melts. When they dry up, they vanish. When it is hot, they disappear from their place. The paths of their course wind along, they go up into wasteland and perish. The caravans of Tima looked, the travelers of Sheba hoped for them. They were put to shame, for they had trusted, they came there and were humiliated. Indeed, you have now become such, you see terrors and are afraid. Have I said, give me something, or, offer a bribe for me from your wealth, or, save me from the hand of the enemy, or, Redeem me from the hand of the tyrants? Teach me, and I will be silent. And show me how I have done wrong. How painful are honest words. But what does your argument prove? Do you intend to rebuke my words, when the words of one in despair belong to the wind? You would even cast lots for the orphans, and barter over your friend. Now please look at me, and see if I am lying to your face. Please turn away, let there be no injustice. Turn away, my righteousness is still in it. Is there injustice on my tongue? Does my palate not discern disasters? Job's life seems futile. Is a person not forced to labor on earth, and are his days not like the days of a hired worker? As a slave pants for the shade, and as a hired worker who eagerly waits for his wages, so I am allotted worthless months, and nights of trouble are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night continues, and I am continually tossing until dawn. My flesh is clothed with maggots in a crust of dirt, my skin hardens and oozes. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and they come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is a mere breath. My eye will not see goodness again. The eye of him who sees me will no longer look at me. Your eyes will be on me, but I will not exist. When a cloud vanishes, it is gone. In the same way one who goes down to Shul does not come up. He will not return to his house again nor will his place know about him any more. Therefore I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit, I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I the sea, or the sea monster, that you set a guard over me? If I say, my couch will comfort me, my bed will ease my complaint, then you frighten me with dreams, and terrify me by visions, so that my soul would choose a suffocation, death rather than my pains. I waste away. I will not live forever. Leave me alone for my days are only a breath. What is man that you exalt him, and that you are concerned about him, that you examine him every morning and put him to the test every moment? Will you never turn your gaze away from me, nor leave me alone until I swallow my spittle? Have I sinned? What have I done to you, watcher of mankind? Why have you made me your target, so that I am a burden to myself? Why then do you not forgive my wrongdoing and take away my guilt? For now I will lie down in the dust, and you will search for me 
but I will no longer exist, Bildad says God rewards the good. Then Bildad the Shuhite responded, How long will you say these things, and the words of your mouth be a mighty wind? Does God pervert justice? Or does the Almighty pervert what is right? If your son sinned against him, then he turned them over to the power of their wrongdoing. If you will search for God and implore the compassion of the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, surely now he will stir himself for you and restore your righteous estate. Though your beginning was insignificant, yet your end will increase greatly. Please inquire of past generations, and consider the things searched out by their fathers. For we are only of yesterday and know nothing, because our days on earth are as a shadow. Will they not teach you and tell you, and bring forth words from their minds? Can papyrus grow tall without a marsh? Can the rushes grow without water? While it is still green and not cut down, yet it withers before any other plant. So are the parts of all who forget God. And the hope of the godless will perish. His confidence is fragile, and his trust is a spider's web. He depends on his house, but it does not stand. He holds on to it, but it does not endure. He flourishes before the sun, and his shoots spread out over his garden. His roots wrap around a rock pile, he grasps a house of stones. If he is removed from his place, then it will deny him, saying, I never saw you. Behold, this is the joy of his way. And out of the dust others will spring. Behold, God will not reject a person of integrity, nor will he help evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter, and your lips with joyful shouting. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame, and the tent of the wicked will no longer exist. Job says there is no arbitrator between God and mankind. Then Job responded. In truth I know that this is so. But how can a person be in the right with God? If one wished to dispute with him, he could not answer him once in a thousand times. Wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has defied him without harm? It is God who removes the mountains, and they do not know how, when he overturns them in his anger. It is he who shakes the earth from its place, and its pillars tremble. Who commands the sun not to shine, and puts a seal on the stars? Who alone stretches out the heavens? and tramples down the waves of the sea? Who makes the bear, Orion, and the Pleiades, and the constellations of the south? It is he who does great things, the unfathomable, and wondrous works without number. If he were to pass by me, I would not see him. Were he to move past me, I would not perceive him. If he were to snatch away, who could restrain him? Who could say to him, What are you doing? God will not turn back his anger. Beneath him the helpers of Rahab cower. How then can I answer him, and choose my words before him? For though I were right, I could not answer. I would have to implore the mercy of my judge. If I called and he answered me, I could not believe that he was listening to my voice. For he bruises me with a storm and multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not allow me to get my breath, but he saturates me with bitterness. If it is a matter of power, behold, he is the strong one. And if it is a matter of justice, who can summon him? Though I am righteous, my mouth will condemn me. Though I am guiltless, he will declare me guilty. I am guiltless. I do not take notice of myself. I reject my life. It is all one. Therefore I say, he destroys the guiltless and the wicked. If the whip kills suddenly, he marks the despair of the innocent. The earth is handed over to the wicked. He covers the faces of its judges. If it is not he, then who is it? Now my days are swifter than a runner. They flee away, they see no good. They slip by like reed boats, like an eagle that swoops on its prey. Though I say, I will forget my complaint, I will put my face in order and be cheerful. I am afraid of all my pains, I know that you will not acquit me. I am guilty, why then should I struggle in vain? If I washed myself with snow, and cleansed my hands with lye, then you would plunge me into the pit, and my own clothes would load me. For he is not a man, as I am, that I may answer him, that we may go to court together. There is no arbitrator between us, who can place his hand upon us both. Let him remove his rod from me, and let not the dread of him terrify me. Then I would speak and not fear him. But I am not like that in myself. Job despairs of God's dealings. I am disgusted with my own life. I will express my complaint freely. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, do not condemn me. Let me know why you contend with me. Is it right for you indeed to oppress, to reject the work of your hands? and to look favorably on the plan of the wicked? Do you have eyes of flesh? Or do you see as mankind sees? Are your days like the days of a mortal, or your years like a man's year, that you should search for my guilt and carefully seek my sin? 
According to your knowledge I am indeed not guilty, yet there is no one to save me from your hand. Your hands fashioned and made me altogether, yet would you destroy me? Remember that you have made me as clay, yet would you turn me into dust again? Did you not pour me out like milk, and curdle me like cheese, clothe me with skin and flesh, and intertwine me with bones and tendons? You have granted me life and goodness, and your care has guarded my spirit. Yet you have concealed these things in your heart. I know that this is within you. If I have sinned, you will take note of me, and will not acquit me of my guilt. If I am wicked, woe to me. But if I am righteous, I dare not lift up my head. I am full of shame, and conscious of my misery. And should my head be high, you would hunt me like a lion. And you would show your power against me again. You renew your witnesses against me and increase your anger toward me. Hardship after hardship is with me. Why then did you bring me out of the womb? If only I had died and no eye had seen me. I should have been as though I had not been, brought from womb to tomb. Would he not leave my few days alone? Withdraw from me so that I may have a little cheerfulness. Before I go, and I shall not return, to the land of darkness and deep shadow, the land of utter gloom like darkness itself, of deep shadow without order, and it shines like darkness, Zafar rebukes Job. Then Zafar the Naamathite responded, Shall a multitude of words go unanswered, and a talkative man be acquitted? Shall your boast silence people? And will you scoff, and no one rebuke? For you have said, My teaching is pure, and I am innocent in your eyes. But if only God would speak, and open his lips against you, and show you the secrets of wisdom. For sound wisdom has two sides. Know then that God forgets part of your guilt. Can you discover the depths of God? Can you discover the limits of the Almighty? They are as high as the heavens. What can you do? Deeper than shall. What can you know? Its measurement is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If he passes by or apprehends people, or calls an assembly, who can restrain him? For he knows false people, and he sees injustice without investigating. An idiot will become intelligent when a wild donkey is born a human. If you would direct your heart rightly and spread out your hands to him, if wrongdoing is in your hand, put it far away, and do not let malice dwell in your tents. Then, indeed, you could lift up your face without moral blemish, and you would be firmly established and not fear. For you would forget your trouble. Like waters that have passed by, you would remember it. Your life would be brighter than noonday. Darkness would be like the morning. Then you would trust, because there is hope. And you would look around and rest securely. You would lie down and none would disturb you, and many would flatter you. But the eyes of the wicked will fail, and there will be no escape for them. And their hope is to breathe their last. Job chides his accusers. Then Job responded. Truly then you are the people, and with you wisdom will die. But I have intelligence as well as you. I am not inferior to you. And who does not know such things as these? I am a joke to my friends, the one who called on God and he answered him. The just and blameless man is a joke. He who is at ease holds disaster in contempt, as prepared for those whose feet slip. The tents of the destroyers prosper, and those who provoke God are secure, whom God brings into their power. But just ask the animals, and have them teach you. And the birds of the sky, and have them tell you. Or speak to the earth, and have it teach you. And have the fish of the sea tell you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In whose hand is the life of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind? Does the ear not put words to the test, as the palate tastes its food? Wisdom is with the aged, and with long life comes understanding. Job speaks of the power of God. Wisdom and might are with him. Advice and understanding belong to him. Behold, he tears down, and it cannot be rebuilt. He imprisons a person, and there is no release. Behold, he restrains the waters, and they dry up. And he sends them out, and they inundate the earth. Strength and sound wisdom are with him. One who goes astray and one who leads astray belong to him. He makes advisers walk barefoot and makes fools of judges. He undoes the binding of kings, and ties a loincloth around their waist. He makes priests walk barefoot, and overthrows the secure ones. He deprives the trusted ones of speech, and takes away the discernment of the elders. He pours contempt on nobles, and loosens the belt of the strong. He reveals mysteries from the darkness, and brings the deep darkness into light. He makes the nations great, then destroys them. He enlarges the nations, then leads them away. He deprives the leaders of the earth's people of intelligence and makes them wander in a pathless wasteland. They grope in darkness with no light, 
and he makes them stag like a drunken person. Job says his friend's proverbs are ashes. Behold, my eye has seen all this, my ear has heard and understood it. What you know I also know. I am not inferior to you. But I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to argue with God. But you smear me with lies. You are all worthless physicians. Oh that you would be completely silent, and that it would become your wisdom. Please hear my argument, and give your attention to the contentions of my lips. Will you speak what is unjust for God, and speak what is deceitful for Him? Will you show partiality for Him? Will you contend for God? Will it go well when He examines you? Or will you deceive Him as one deceives a man? He will certainly punish you if you secretly show partiality. Will His Majesty not terrify you, and the dread of Him fall upon you? Your memorable sayings are proverbs of ashes, your defences are defences of clay. Job is sure he will be vindicated. Be silent before me so that I may speak. Then let come upon me what may. Why should I take my flesh in my teeth, and put my life in my hands? Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Nevertheless I will argue my ways before him. This also will be my salvation, for a godless person cannot come before his presence. Listen carefully to my speech, and let my declaration fill your ears. Behold now, I have prepared my case. I know that I will be vindicated. Who could contend with me? For then I would be silent and die. Only two things I ask that you do not do to me, then I will not hide from your face. Remove your hand from me, and may the dread of you not terrify me. Then call and I will answer. Or let me speak, then reply to me. How many are my guilty deeds and sins? Make known to me my wrongdoing and my sin. Why do you hide your face and consider me your enemy? Will you scare away a scattered leaf? Or will you pursue the dry chaff? For you write bitter things against me and make me inherit the guilty deeds of my youth. You put my feet in the stocks and watch all my paths. You set a limit for the soles of my feet. While I am decaying like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth-eaten, Job speaks of the finality of death. Man, who is born of woman, is short-lived and full of turmoil. Like a flower he comes out and withers. He also flees like a shadow and does not remain. You also open your eyes on him and bring him into judgment with yourself. Who can make the clean out of the unclean? No one. Since his days are determined, the number of his months is with you. And you have set his limits so that he cannot pass. Look away from him so that he may rest, until he fulfills his day like a hired worker. For there is hope for a tree, when it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and its shoots will not fail. Though its roots grow old in the ground, and its stump dies in the dry soil, at the scent of water it will flourish and produce sprigs like a plant. But a man dies and lies prostrate. A person passes away, and where is he? As water evaporates from the sea, and a river becomes parched and dried up, so a man lies down and does not rise. Until the heavens no longer exist, he will not awaken or be woken from his sleep. Oh that you would hide me in shell, that you would conceal me until your wrath returns to you, that you would set a limit for me and remember me. If a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my struggle I will wait until my relief comes. You will call, and I will answer you. You will long for the work of your hands. For now you number my steps, you do not observe my sin. My wrongdoing is sealed up in a bag, and you cover over my guilt. But the falling mountain crumbles away, and the rock moves from its place. Water wears away stones, its torrents wash away the dust of the earth. So you destroy a man's hope. You forever overpower him and he departs. You change his appearance and send him away. His sons achieve honor, but he does not know it. Or they become insignificant, and he does not perceive it. However, his body pains him, and his soul mourns for himself. Elipaz says Job presumes much. Then Elipaz that Manite responded, Should a wise man answer with windy knowledge, and fill himself with the east wind? Should he argue with useless talk, or with words which do not benefit? Indeed, you do away with reverence and hinder meditation before God. For your wrongdoing teaches your mouth, and you choose the language of the cunning. Your own mouth condemns you, and not I. And your own lips testify against you. Were you the first person to be born, or were you brought forth before the hills? Do you hear the secret discussion of God, and limit wisdom to yourself? What do you know that we do not know? What do you understand that we do not? Both the grey-haired and the aged are among us, older than your father. Are the consolations of God too little for you, or the word spoken gently to you? Why does your heart take you away? And why do your eyes wink?
that you can turn your spirit against God and produce such words from your mouth? What is man, that he would be pure, or he who is born of a woman, that he would be righteous? Behold, he has no trust in his holy ones, and the heavens are not pure in his sight. How much less one who is detestable and corrupt, a person who drinks malice like water. What Elipaz has seen of life? I will tell you, listen to me. And what I have seen I will also declare. What wise people have told, and have not concealed from their fathers, to whom alone the land was given, and no stranger passed among them. The wicked person rides in pain all his ace, and the years reserved for the ruthless are numbered. Sounds of terror are in his ears. While he is at peace the destroyer comes upon him. He does not believe that he will return from darkness, and he is destined for the sword. He wanders about for food, saying, Where is it? He knows that a day of darkness is at hand. Distress and anguish terrify him, they overpower him like a king ready for the attack. Because he has reached out with his hand against God, and is arrogant toward the Almighty. He rushes headlong at him with his massive shield. For he has covered his face with his fat, and put fat on his waist. He has lived in desolate cities, in houses no one would inhabit, which are destined to become ruins. He will not become rich, nor will his wealth endure. And his property will not stretch out on the earth. He will not escape from darkness. The flame will dry up his shoot, and he will go away by the breath of his mouth. Let him not trust in emptiness, deceiving himself. For his reward will be emptiness. It will be accomplished before his time, and his palm branch will not be green. He will drop off his unripe grape like the vine, and will cast off his flower like the olive tree. For the company of the godless is barren, and fire consumes the tents of the corrupt. They conceive harm and give birth to wrongdoing, and their mind prepares deception. Job says friends are miserable comforters. Then Job responded, I have heard many things like these. Miserable comforters are you all. Is there no end to windy words? Or what provokes you that you answer? I too could speak like you, if only I were in your place. I could compose words against you and shake my head at you. Or I could strengthen you with my mouth, and the condolence of my lips could lessen your pain. Job says God shattered him. If I speak, my pain is not lessened, and if I refrain, what pain leaves me? But now he has exhausted me. You have laid waste all my group of loved ones. And you have shriveled me up, it has become a witness. And my infirmity rises up against me, it testifies to my face. His anger has torn me and hunted me down, he has gnashed at me with his teeth. My enemy glares at me. They have gaped at me with their mouths, they have slapped me on the cheek with contempt. They have massed themselves against me. God hands me over to criminals, and tosses me into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, but he shattered me, and he has grasped me by my neck and shaken me to pieces. He has also set me up as his target. His arrows surround me. He splits my kidneys open without mercy. He pours out my bile on the ground. He breaks through me with breach after breach. He runs at me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth over my skin, and thrust my horn in the dust. My face is flushed from weeping and deep darkness is on my eyelids, although there is no violence in my hands, and my prayer is pure. Earth, do not cover my blood, and may there be no resting place for my cry. Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my advocate is on high. My friends are my scoffers. My eye weeps to God. That one might plead for a man with God as a son of man with his neighbor. For when a few years are past, I shall go the way of no return. Job says he has become a proverb. My spirit is broken, my days are extinguished, the grave is ready for me. Mockers are certainly with me, and my eye gazes on their provocation. Make a pledge for me with yourself. Who is there that will be my guarantor? For you have kept their hearts away from understanding. Therefore you will not exalt them. He who informs against friends for a share of the spoils, the eyes of his children also will perish. But he has made me a proverb among the people, and I am one at whom people spit. My eye has also become inexpressive because of grief, and all my body parts are like a shadow. The upright will be appalled at this, and the innocent will stir himself up against the godless. Nevertheless the righteous will hold to his way, and the one who has clean hands will grow stronger and stronger. But come again all of you now, for I do not find a wise man among you. My days are past, my plans are torn apart, the wishes of my heart. They make night into day, saying, The light is near, in the presence of darkness. If I hope for shall as my home, I make my bed in the darkness. If I call to the grave, you are my father. To the maggot, my mother and my sister. Where then is my hope? 
and who looks at my hope? Will it go down with me to Shul? Shall we together go down into the dust? Bildad speaks of the wicked. Then Bildad the Shuhite responded, How long will you hunt for words? Show understanding, and then we can talk. Why are we regarded as animals, as stupid in your eyes? You who tear yourself in your anger, should the earth be abandoned for your sake, or the rock moved from its place? Indeed, the light of the wicked goes out, and the spark from his fire does not shine. The light in his tent is darkened, and his lamp goes out above him. His vigorous stride is shortened, and his own plan brings him down. For he is thrown into the net by his own feet, and he steps on the webbing. A snare seizes him by the heel, and a trap snaps shut on him. A noose for him is hidden in the ground, and a trap for him on the pathway. All around sudden terrors frighten him, and harass him at every step. His strength is famished, and disaster is ready at his side. It devours parts of his skin, the firstborn of death devours his limbs. He is torn from the security of his tent, and they march him before the king of terrors. Nothing of his dwells in his tent. Brimstone is scattered on his home. His roots are dried below, and his branch withers above. The memory of him perishes from the earth, and he has no name abroad. He is driven from light into darkness, and chased from the inhabited world. He has no offspring or descendants among his people, nor any survivor where he resided. Those in the west are appalled at his fate, and those in the east are seized with horror. Certainly these are the dwellings of the wicked, and this is the place of him who does not know God. Job feels insulted. Then Job responded, How long will you torment me and crush me with words? These ten times you have insulted me. You are not ashamed to wrong me. Even if I have truly done wrong, my arrow stays with me. If indeed you exalt yourselves against me and prove my disgrace to me, know then that God has wronged me and has surrounded me with his net. Everything is against him. Behold, I cry, violence. But I get no answer. I shout for help, but there is no justice. He has blocked my way so that I cannot pass, and he has put darkness on my paths. He has stripped my honor from me and removed the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side, and I am gone and he has uprooted my hope like a tree. He has also kindled his anger against me and considered me as his enemy. His troops come together and build up their way against me and camp around my tent. He has removed my brothers far from me, and my acquaintances have completely turned away from me. My relatives have failed, and my close friends have forgotten me. Those who live in my house and my servant women consider me a stranger. I am a foreigner in their sight. I call to my servant, but he does not answer. I have to implore his favor with my mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife, and I am loathsome to my own brothers. Even young children despise me. I stand up and they speak against me. All my associates loathe me, and those I love have turned against me. My bone clings to my skin and my flesh, and I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. Pity me, pity me, you friends of mine, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you persecute me as God does, and are not satisfied with my flesh? Job says my Redeemer lives. Oh that my words were written. Oh that they were recorded in a book. That with an iron stylus and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. Yet is for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last, he will take his stand on the earth. Even after my skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh I will see God, whom I, on my part, shall behold for myself, and whom my eyes will see, and not another. My heart faints within me. If you say, how shall we persecute him? And what pretext for a case against him can we find? Then be afraid of the sword for yourselves, for wrath brings the punishment of the sword, so that you may know there is judgment. Zephar says the rejoicing of the wicked is short. Then Zephar the Naamathite responded, Therefore my disquieting thoughts make me respond, even because of my inward agitation. I listen to the reprimand which insults me, and the spirit of my understanding makes me answer. Do you know this from ancient times? from the establishment of mankind on earth, that the rejoicing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the godless momentary? Though his arrogance reaches the heavens, and his head touches the clouds, he perishes forever like his refuse. Those who have seen him will say, Where is he? He flies away like a dream, and they cannot find him. Like a vision of the night he is chased away. The eye which saw him sees him no longer, and his place no longer beholds him. His sons favor the poor, and his hands give back his wealth. His bones are full of his youthful strength, but it lies down with him in the dust. Though evil tastes sweet in his mouth and he hides it under his tongue, though he desires it and will not let it go, but holds it in his mouth, 
yet his food in his stomach is changed to the venom of cobras within him. He swallows riches, but will vomit them up. God will expel them from his belly. He sucks the poison of cobras. The viper's tongue kills him. He does not look at the streams, the rivers flowing with honey and curds. He returns the product of his labor and cannot swallow it. As to the riches of his trading, he cannot even enjoy them. For he is oppressed and neglected the poor. He has seized a house which he has not built. Because he knew no quiet within him, he does not retain anything he desires. Nothing remains for him to devour, therefore his prosperity does not endure. In the fullness of his excess he will be cramped. The hand of everyone who suffers will come against him. When he fills his belly, God will send his fierce anger on him on rain it on him while he is eating. He may flee from the iron weapon, but the bronze bow will pierce him. It is drawn and comes out of his back, even the flashing point from his gallbladder. Terrors come upon him. Complete darkness is held in reserve for his treasures, and unfanned fire will devour him. It will consume the survivor in his tent. The heavens will reveal his guilt, and the earth will rise up against him. The increase of his house will disappear. His possessions will flow away on the day of his anger. This is a wicked person's portion from God, the inheritance decreed to him by God. Job says God will deal with the wicked. Then Job responded, Listen carefully to my speech, and let this be your way of consolation. Bear with me that I may speak. Then after I have spoken, you may mock me. As for me, is my complaint to a mortal? Or why should I not be impatient? Look at me, and be astonished, and put your hand over your mouth. Even when I remember, I'm disturbed, and horror takes hold of my flesh. Why do the wicked still live, grow old, and also become very powerful? Their descendants endure with them in their sight, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, and the rod of God is not on them. His ox mates without fail. His cow cubs and does not miscarry. They send out their boys like the flock, and their children dance. They sing with the tambourine and harp, and rejoice at the sound of the flute. They spend their days in prosperity, and suddenly they go down to Shil. Yet they say to God, Go away from us. We do not even desire the knowledge of your ways. Who is the Almighty, that we should serve Him, and what would we gain if we plead with Him? Behold, their prosperity is not in their hand. The advice of the wicked is far from me. How often is the lamp of the wicked put out, or does their disaster fall on them? Does God apportion destruction in His anger? Are they as straw before the wind, and like chaff which the storm carries away? You say, God saves up a person's wrongdoing for his sons. Let God repay him so that he may know it. Let his own eyes see his destruction, and let him drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what does he care about his household after him, when the number of his months is at an end? Can anyone teach God knowledge, in that he judges those on high? One dies in his full strength, being wholly undisturbed and at ease. His sides are filled with fat, and the marrow of his bones is wet, while another dies with a bitter soul, never even tasting anything good. Together they lie down in the dust, and maggots cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts, and the plots you devise against me. For you say, where is the house of the nobleman, and where is the tent, the dwelling places of the wicked? Have you not asked travelers, and do you not examine the evidence? For the wicked person is spared a day of disaster. They are led away from a day of fury. Who confronts him with his actions, and who repays him for what he has done? When he is carried to the grave, people will keep watch over his tomb. The clods of the valley will gently cover him. Moreover, all mankind will follow after him, while countless others go before him. So how dare you give me empty comfort? For your answers remain nothing but falsehood. Elipaz accuses and exhorts Job. Then Elipaz that Manite responded, Can a strong man be of use to God, or a wise one be useful to himself? Is it any pleasure to the Almighty if you are righteous, or gain if you make your ways blameless? Is it because of your reverence that he punishes you, that he enters into judgment against you? Is your wickedness not abundant, and is there no end to your guilty deeds? For you have seized pledges from your brothers without cause, and stripped people naked. You have given the weary no water to drink, and you have withheld bread from the hungry. But the earth belongs to the powerful man, and the one who is honorable dwells on it. You have sent widows away empty, and the strength of orphans has been crushed. Therefore traps surround you, and sudden dread terrifies you, or darkness, so that you cannot see, and a flood of water covers you. Is God not in the height of heaven? Look also at the highest stars, how high they are. But you say, what does God know? Can't he judge through the thick darkness? Clouds are a hiding place for him, 
so that he cannot see, and he walks on the vault of heaven. Will you keep to the ancient path which wicked people have walked, who were snatched away before their time, whose foundations were washed away by a river? They said to God, Go away from us. And what can the Almighty do to them? Yet he filled their houses with good things. But the advice of the wicked is far from me. The righteous see are not glad, and the innocent mock them, saying, Truly our enemies are eliminated, and fire has consumed their abundance. Be reconciled with him, and be at peace. Thereby good will will come to you. Please receive instruction from his mouth, and put his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you remove injustice far from your tent. And put your gold in the dust, and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. Then the Almighty will be your gold and abundant silver to you. For then you will take pleasure in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. You will pray to him, and he will hear you. And you will pay your vows. You will also decide something, and it will be established for you. And light will shine on your ways. When they have brought you low, you will speak with confidence, and he will save the humble person. He will rescue one who is not innocent, and he will be rescued due to the cleanness of your hands. Job says he longs for God. Then Job responded, Even today my complaint is rebellion. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh that I knew how to find him, that I might come to his home. I would present my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn the words which he would answer, and perceive what he would tell me. Would he contend with me by the greatness of his power? No, surely he would pay attention to me. There the upright would argue with him. And I would be free of my judge forever. Behold, I go forward but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he acts on the left, I cannot see him. He turns to the right, but I cannot see him. But he knows the way I take. When he has put me to the test, I will come out as gold. My foot has held on to his path. I have kept his way and not turned aside. I have not failed the command of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. But he is unique, and who can make him turn? Whatever his soul desires, he does it. For he carries out what is destined for me and many such destinies are with him. Therefore, I would be terrified at his presence. When I consider this, I am frightened of him. It is God who has made my heart faint, and the Almighty who has terrified me. But I am not destroyed by darkness, nor by deep gloom which covers me. Job says God seems to ignore wrongs. Why are times not stored up by the Almighty, and why do those who know him not see his days? People remove landmarks. They seize and devour flocks. They drive away the donkeys of orphans. They seize the widow's ox as a pledge. They push the needy aside from the road. The poor of the land have to hide themselves together. Behold, like wild donkeys in the wilderness they go out scavenging for food in their activity, as bread for their children in the desert. They harvest their feed in the field and glean the vineyard of the wicked. They spent the night naked, without clothing, and have no covering against the cold. They are wet from the mountain rains, and they hug the rock for lack of a shelter. Others snatch an orphan from the breast, and they seize it as a pledge against the poor. The poor move about naked without clothing, and they carry sheaves, while going hungry. Within the walls they produce oil. They tread wine presses but go thirsty. From the city people groan, and the souls of the wounded cry for help. Yet God does not pay attention to the offensiveness. Others have been with those who rebel against the light. They do not want to know its ways nor stay in its paths. The murderer rises at dawn. He kills the poor and the needy, and at night he is like a thief. The eye of the adulterer watches for twilight, saying, No eye will see me. And he disguises his face. In the darkness they dig into houses, they shut themselves up by day. They do not know the light. For the morning is the same to him as thick darkness, for he is familiar with the terrors of thick darkness. They are insignificant on the surface of the water. Their plot of land on the earth is cursed. They do not turn toward the vineyards. Dryness and heat snatch away the snow's waters, as Shul snatches those who have sinned. A mother will forget him. The maggot feeds sweetly until he is no longer remembered. And injustice will be broken like a tree. He wrongs the infertile woman, and does no good for the widow. But he drags off the mighty by his power. He rises, but no one has assurance of life. He provides them with security, and they are supported. And his eyes are on their ways. They are exalted a little while, then they are gone. Moreover, they are brought low, and like everything they are gathered up. Like the heads of grain they wither. Now if it is not so, who can prove me a liar?
and make my speech worthless? Bildad says mankind is inferior. Then Bildad the Shuhite responded. Dominion and all belong to him who makes peace in his heights. Is there any number to his troops? And upon whom does his light not rise? How then can mankind be righteous with God? Or how can anyone who is born of woman be pure? If even the moon has no brightness and the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less man, that maggot, and a son of man, that worm? Job rebukes Bildad. Then Job responded, What a help you are to the weak. You have saved the arm without strength. What advice you have given to one without wisdom. What helpful insight you have abundantly provided. To whom have you uttered words? And whose spirit was expressed through you? The greatness of God. The departed spirits are made to tremble under the waters in their inhabitants. Shul is naked before him, and Abaddon has no covering. He stretches out the north over empty space and hangs the earth on nothing. He wraps up the waters in his clouds, and the cloud does not burst under them. He obscures the face of the full moon and spreads his cloud over it. He has inscribed a circle on the surface of the waters at the boundary of light and darkness. The pillars of heaven tremble and are amazed at his rebuke. With his power he quieted the sea, and by his understanding he shattered Rehab. By his breath the heavens are cleared. His hand has pierced the fleeing serpent. Behold, these are the fringes of his ways. And how faint a word we hear of him. But his mighty thunder, who can understand? Job affirms his righteousness. Job again took up his discourse and said, As God lives, who has taken away my right, and the Almighty, who has embittered my soul. For as long as life is in me and the breath of God is in my nostrils. My lips certainly will not speak unjustly, nor will my tongue mutter deceit. Far be it from me that I should declare you right. Until I die, I will not give up my integrity. I have kept hold of my righteousness and will not let it go. My heart does not rebuke any of my days. The state of the godless. May my enemy be as the wicked, and my opponent as the criminal. For what is the hope of the godless when he makes an end of life, when God requires his life? Will God hear his cry when distress comes upon him? Or will he take pleasure in the Almighty? Will he call on God at all times? I will instruct you in the power of God. What is with the Almighty I will not conceal. Behold, all of you have seen it. Why then do you talk of nothing? This is the portion of a wicked person from God, and the inheritance which tyrants receive from the Almighty. Though his sons are many, they are destined for the sword. And his descendants will not be satisfied with bread. His survivors will be buried because of the plague, and their widows will not be able to weep. Though he piles up silver like dust, and prepares garments as plentiful as the clay, he may prepare it, but the righteous will wear it and the innocent will divide the silver. He has built his house like the spider's web, or a hut which the watchman has made. He lies down rich, but never again. He opens his eyes, and it no longer exists. Terrors overtake him like a flood. A storm steals him away in the night. The east wind carries him away, and he is gone. For it sweeps him away from his place. For it will hurl at him without mercy. He will certainly try to flee from its power. People will clap their hands at him, and will whistle at him from their places. Job tells of earth's treasures. Certainly there is a mine for silver and a place for refining gold. Iron is taken from the dust, and copper is smelted from rock. Man puts an end to darkness, and to the farthest limit he searches out the rock in gloom and deep shadow. He sinks a shaft away from inhabited areas, forgotten by the foot. They hang and swing, away from people. From the earth comes food, and underneath, it is turned over like fire. Its rocks are the source of sapphires, and its dust contains gold. No bird of prey knows the path, nor has the falcon's eye caught sight of it. The proud animals have not trodden it, nor has the lion passed over it. He puts his hand on the flint. He overturns the mountains at the base. He carves out channels through the rocks, and his eye sees anything precious. He dumbs up the streams from flowing, and brings to light what is hidden. The search for wisdom is harder. But where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Mankind does not know its value, nor is it found in the land of the living. The ocean depth says, it is not in me. And the sea says, it is not with me. Pure gold cannot be given in exchange for it, nor can silver be weighed as its price. It cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir, in precious onyx, or sapphire. Gold or glass cannot equal it, nor can it be exchanged for articles of pure gold. Coral and crystal are not to be mentioned, and the acquisition of wisdom is more valuable than pearls. The topaz of Kush cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. 
Where then does wisdom come from? And where is this place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of every living creature, and concealed from the birds of the sky. Abaddon and Death say, with our ears we have heard a report of it. God understands its way, and he knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth. He sees everything under the heavens. When he imparted weight to the wind, and assessed the waters by measure, when he made a limit for the rain, and a course for the thunderbolt, then he saw it and declared it. He established it and also searched it out. And to mankind he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to turn away from evil is understanding. Job's past was glorious. Job again took up his discourse and said, O oh, that I were as in months gone by, as in the days when God watched over me. When his lamp shone over my head, and by his light I walked through darkness. Just as I was in the days of my youth, when the protection of God was over my tent. When the Almighty was still with me, and my children were around me. When my steps were bathed in cream, and the rock poured out streams of oil for me. When I went out to the gate of the city, when I took my seat in the public square, the young men saw me and hid themselves, and the old men arose and stood. The leaders stopped talking and put their hands on their mouths. The voices of the prominent people were hushed, and their tongues stuck to their palates. For when an ear heard, it called me blessed, and when an eye saw, it testified in support of me, because I saved the poor who cried for help, and the orphan who had no helper. The blessing of the one who was about to perish came upon me, and I made the widow's heart sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a headband. I was eyes to those who were blind, and feet to those who could not walk. I was a father to the poor, and I investigated the case which I did not know. I broke the jaws of the wicked and rescued the prey from his teeth. Then I thought, I will die with my family, and I will multiply my days as the sand. My root is spread out to the waters, and dew lies on my branch all night. My glory is ever new with me, and my bow is renewed in my hand. To me they listened and waited, and they kept silent for my advice. After my words they did not speak again, and my speech dropped on them. They waited for me as for the rain, and opened their mouths as for the late rain. I smiled at them when they did not believe, and they did not look at my kindness ungraciously. I chose a way for them and sat as chief, and lived as a king among the troops, as one who comforted the mourners. Job's present state is humiliating. But now those who are younger than I mock me, whose fathers I refused to put with the dogs of my flock. Indeed, what good was the strength of their hands to me? Vigor had perished from them. From poverty and famine they have gaunt, they who gnaw at the dry ground by night in waste and desolation, who pluck salt weed by the bushes, and whose food is the root of the broom shrub. They are driven from the community. They shout against them as against a thief. So that they live on the slopes of ravines, in holes in the ground and among the rocks. Among the bushes they cry out. Under the weeds they are gathered together. Worthless fellows, even those without a name, they were cast out from the land. And now I have become their taunt, and I have become a byword to them. They load me and stand aloof from me, and they do not refrain from spitting in my face. Because he has undone my bowstring and afflicted me, they have cast off the bridle before me. On the right hand their mob arises. They push aside my feet and pile up their ways of destruction against me. They break up my path, they promote my destruction. No one restrains them. As through a wide gap they come, amid the storm they roll on. Sudden terrors are turned upon me. They chase away my dignity like the wind, and my prosperity has passed away like a cloud. And now my soul is poured out within me. Days of misery have seized me. At night it pierces my bones within me, and my gnawing pains do not rest. By a great force my garment is distorted. It ties me up like the collar of my coat. He has thrown me into the mire, and I have become like dust and ashes. I cry out to you for help, but you do not answer me. I stand up, and you turn your attention against me. You have become cruel to me. With the strength of your hand you persecute me. You lift me up to the wind and make me ride it. And you dissolve me in a storm. For I know that you will bring me to death, and to the house of meeting for all living. Yet does one in a heap of ruins not reach out with his hand? Or in his disaster does he not cry out for help? Have I not wept for the one whose life is hard? Was my soul not grieved for the needy? When I expected good, evil came. When I waited for light, darkness came. I am seething within and cannot rest. Days of misery confront me. I go about mourning without comfort. I stand up in the assembly and cry out for help. I have become a brother to jackals, and a companion of ostriches. 
my skin turns black on me, and my bones burn with fever. Therefore my harp is turned to mourning, and my flute to the sound of those who weep. Job asserts his integrity. I have made a covenant with my eyes. How then could I look at a virgin? And what is the portion of God from above, or the inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is it not disaster to the criminal, and misfortune to those who practice injustice? Does he not see my ways, and count all my steps? If I have walked with deception, and my foot has hurried after deceit, let him weigh me with accurate scales, and let God know my integrity. If my step has turned from the way, or my heart followed my eyes, or if any spot has stuck to my hands, let me sow and another eat, and let my crops be uprooted. If my heart has been enticed by a woman, or I have lurked at my neighbor's doorway, may my wife grind grain for another, and let others kneel down over her. For that would be a lustful crime. Moreover, it would be wrongdoing punishable by judges. For it would be fire that consumes to abandon, and would uproot all my increase. If I have rejected the claim of my male or female slaves when they filed a complaint against me, what then could I do when God arises? And when he calls me to account, how am I to answer him? Did he who made me in the womb not make him, and the same one create us in the womb? If I have kept the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my morsel alone, and the orphan has not shared it. But from my youth he grew up with me as with a father, and from my infancy I guided her. If I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing, or that the needy had no covering, if his waist has not thanked me, and if he has not been warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted up my hand against the orphan, because I saw I had support in the gate, may my shoulder fall from its socket, and my arm be broken off at the elbow. For disaster from God is a terror to me, and because of his majesty I can do nothing. If I have put my confidence in gold, and called fine gold my trust, if I have gloated because my wealth was great, and because my hand had obtained so much, if I have looked at the sun when it shone, or the moon going in splendor, and my heart was secretly enticed, and my hand drew a kiss from my mouth, that too would have been a guilty deed calling for judgment, for I would have denied God above. Have I rejoiced at the misfortune of my enemy, or become excited when evil found him? No, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by asking for his life in a curse. Have the people of my tent not said, who can find one who has not been satisfied with his miat? The stranger has not spent the night outside, for I have opened my doors to the traveler. Have I covered my wrongdoings like a man, by hiding my guilt in my shirt pocket? Because I feared the great multitude and the contempt of families terrified me, and I kept silent and did not go out of doors. Oh that I had one to hear me. Here is my signature. Let the Almighty answer me. And the indictment which my adversary has written, I would certainly carry it on my shoulder, I would tie it to myself like a garland. I would declare to him the number of my steps. Like a prince, I would approach him. If my land cries out against me, and its furrows weep together. If I have eaten its fruit without money, or have caused its owners to lose their lives. May the thorn bush grow instead of wheat, and stinkweed instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. Elihu rebukes Job in anger. Then these three men stopped answering Job, because he was righteous in his own eyes. But the anger of Elihu the son of Merachal the Buzite, of the family of Ram, burned against Job. His anger burned because he justified himself before God. And his anger burned against his three friends, because they had found no answer, yet they had condemned Job. Now Elihu had waited to speak to Job because they were years older than he. But when Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of the three men, his anger burned. So Elihu the son of Merachal the Buzite spoke out and said, I am young in years and you are old. Therefore I was shy and afraid to tell you what I think. I thought age should speak and increased years should teach wisdom. But it is a spirit that is in mankind, and the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. The abundant in years may not be wise, nor may elders understand justice. So I say, listen to me, I too will tell what I think. Behold, I waited for your words, I listened to your skillful speech, while you pondered what to say. I also paid close attention to you. But indeed, there was no one who refuted Job, not one of you who answered his words. So do not say, we have found wisdom, God will defeat him, not man. But he has not presented his words against me, nor will I reply to him with your arguments. They are dismayed, they no longer answer. Words have failed them. Should I wait, because they are not speaking, because they have stopped and no longer answer? I too will give my share of answers. I also will tell my opinion. For I am full of words. The spirit within me compels me. Behold, 
my belly is like unvented wine. Like new wineskins, it is about to burst. Let me speak so that I may get relief. Let me open my lips and answer. Let me be partial to no one, nor flatter any man. For I do not know how to flatter, otherwise my maker would quickly take me away. Elihu claims to speak for God. However, please hear my speech, Job, and listen to all my words. Behold now, I open my mouth, my tongue in my mouth speaks. My words are from the integrity of my heart, and my lips speak knowledge sincerely. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Refute me if you can. Line up against me, take your stand. Behold, I belong to God, like you. I too have been formed out of the clay. Behold, no fear of me should terrify you, nor should my pressure weigh heavily on you. You have in fact spoken while I listened, and I heard the sound of your words. I am pure, without wrongdoing. I am innocent and there is no guilt in me. Behold, he invents criticisms against me. He counts me as his enemy. He puts my feet in the stocks. He watches all my paths. Behold, let me respond to you, you are not right in this, for God is greater than mankind. Why do you complain to him that he does not give an account of all his doings? Indeed God speaks once, or twice, yet no one notices it. In a dream, a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people, while they slumber in their beds, then he opens the ears of people, and horrifies them with warnings, so that he may turn a person away from bad conduct, and keep a man from pride. He keeps his soul back from the pit, and his life from perishing by the spear. A person is also rebuked by pain in his bed, and with constant complaint in his bones, so that his life loathes bread, and his soul, food that he should crave. His flesh wastes away from sight, and his bones, which were not seen, stick out. Then his soul comes near to the pit, and his life to those who bring death. If there is an interceding angel for him, one out of a thousand, to remind a person of what is right for him, and he is gracious to him, and says, Free him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom. Let his flesh become fresher than in youth, let him return to the days of his youthful vigor. Then he will pray to God, and he will accept him, so that he may see his face with joy, and he will restore his righteousness to that person. He will sing to people and say, I have sinned and perverted what is right, and it is not proper for me. He has redeemed my soul from going to the pit, and my life will see the light. Behold, God does all these things for a man two or three times, to bring back his soul from the pit, so that he may be enlightened with the light of life. Pay attention, Job, listen to me. Keep silent, and let me speak. Then if you have anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I would take pleasure in justifying you. If not, listen to me. Keep silent, and I will teach you wisdom. Elihu vindicates God's justice. Then Elihu continued and said, Hear my words, you wise men and listen to me, you who understand. For the ear tests words as the palate tastes food. Let us choose for ourselves what is right. Let us understand among ourselves what is good. For Job has said, I am righteous, but God has taken away my right. Should I lie about my right? My wound is incurable, though I am without wrongdoing. What man is like Job, who drinks up derision like water, who goes in company with the workers of injustice, and walks with wicked people? For he has said, it is of no use to a man when he becomes friends with God. Therefore, listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do evil, and from the Almighty to do wrong. For he repays a person for his work, and lets things happen in correspondence to a man's behavior. God certainly will not act wickedly, and the Almighty will not pervert justice. Who gave him authority over the earth? And who has placed the whole world on him? If he were to determine to do so, if he were to gather his spirit and his breath to himself, humanity would perish together, and mankind would return to dust. But if you have understanding, hear this. Listen to the sound of my words. Shall one who hates justice rule? And will you condemn the righteous mighty one, who says to a king, you worthless one, to nobles, you wicked on? Who shows no partiality to the prominent, nor regards the riches above the poor, since they are all the work of his hands? In a moment they die and at midnight people are shaken and pass away, and the powerful are taken away without a hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of a person, and he sees all his steps. There is no darkness or deep shadow where the workers of injustice can hide themselves. For he does not need to consider a person further, that he should go before God in judgment. He breaks in pieces the mighty without investigation, and sets others in their place. Therefore he knows their deeds, 
and he overthrows them in the night, and they are crushed. He strikes them like the wicked in a public place, because they turned aside from following him, and it's no regard for any of his ways, so that they cause the cry of the poor to come to him, and that he would hear the cry of the afflicted. When he keeps quiet, who can condemn? And when he hides his face, who then can look at him, that is, regarding both nation and a person? So that godless people would not rule, nor be snares for the people. For has anyone said to God, I have endured punishment? I will not offend any more. Teach me what I do not see. If I have done wrong, I will not do it again. Shall God repay on your terms, because you have rejected his? For you must choose, and not I. Therefore declare what you know. Men of understanding will say to me, and a wise man who hears me, Job speaks without knowledge, and his words are without wisdom. Oh that Job were tested to the limit, because he answers like sinners. For he adds rebel into his sin. He claps his hands among us, and multiplies his words against God. Elihu sharply rebukes Job. Then Elihu continued and said, Do you think this is in accordance with justice? Do you say, My righteousness is more than God's? For you say, What advantage will it be to you? What benefit will I have, more than if I had sinned? I will answer you, and your friends with you. Look at the heavens and see. And look at the clouds, they're higher than you. If you have sinned, what do you accomplish against him? And if your wrongdoings are many, what do you do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give to him, or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness is for a man like yourself, and your righteousness is for a son of man. Because of the multitude of oppressions they cry out. They cry for help because of the arm of the mighty. But no one says, Where is God my maker, who gives songs in the night? Who teaches us more than the animals of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds of the sky? There they cry out, but he does not answer because of the pride of evil people. God certainly will not listen to an empty cry, nor will the Almighty regard it. How much less when you say you do not look at him, the case is before him, and you must wait for him. And now, because he has not avenged his anger, nor has he acknowledged wrongdoing well, so Job opens his mouth with empty words. He multiplies words without knowledge. Elihu speaks of God's dealings with mankind. Then Elihu continued and said, Wait for me a little, and I will show you that there is still more to be said on God's behalf. I will bring my knowledge from afar, and ascribe righteousness to my Maker. For truly my words are not false. One who is perfect in knowledge is with you. Behold, God is mighty but does not reject anyone. He is mighty in strength of understanding. He does not keep the wicked alive but gives justice to the afflicted. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, but with kings on the throne he has seated them forever, and they are exalted. And if they are bound in shackles, and are caught in the snares of misery, then he declares to them their work and their wrongdoings, that they have been arrogant. He opens their ears to instruction, and commands that they return from injustice. If they listen and serve him, they will end their days in prosperity, and their years in happiness. But if they do not listen, they will perish by the sword, and die without knowledge. But the godless in heart nurture anger. They do not call for help when he binds them. They die in youth, and their life perishes among the cult prostitutes. He rescues the afflicted in their misery, and opens their ears in time of oppression. Then indeed, he induced you away from the mouth of distress, and instead of it, a broad place with no constraint. And your table was full of rich food. But you were full of judgment on the wicked judgment and justice take hold of you. Beware that wrath does not entice you to mockery, and do not let the greatness of the ransom turn you aside. Will your cry for help keep you from distress, or all the exertions of your strength? Do not long for the night, when people vanish in their places. Be careful, do not turn to evil, for you preferred this to misery. Behold, God is exalted in his power. Who is a teacher like him? Who has appointed him his way, and who has said, you have done wrong? Remember that you are to exalt his work, of which people have sung. All people have seen it. Mankind looks at it from afar. Behold, God is exalted, and we do not know him. The number of his years is unsearchable. For he draws up the drops of water. They distill rain from its celestial stream. Which clouds pour down. They drip upon mankind abundantly. Can anyone understand the spreading of the clouds, the thundering of his pavilion? Behold. He spreads his lightning about him, and he covers the depths of the sea. For by them he judges peoples. He gives food in abundance. He covers his hands with the lightning, and commands it to strike the target. Its thundering voice declares his presence. 
the livestock also, concerning what is coming up. Elihu says God has authority over the storm. At this also my heart trembles, and leaps from its place. Listen closely to the thunder of his voice, and the rumbling that goes out from his mouth. Under the whole heaven he lets it loose, and his lightning travels to the ends of the earth. After it, a voice roars. He thunders with his majestic voice, and he does not restrain the lightning when his voice is heard. God thunders wondrously with his voice, doing great things which we do not comprehend. For to the snow he says, fall on the earth, and to the downpour in the rain, be strong. He seals the hand of every person, so that all people may know his work. Then the animal goes into its lair and remains in its den. From the south comes the storm, and from the north wind the cold. From the breath of God ice is made, and the expanse of the waters is frozen. He also loads the clouds with moisture. He disperses the cloud of his lightning. It changes direction, turning around by his guidance, that it may do whatever he commands it on the face of the inhabited earth. Whether for correction, or for his earth, or for goodness, he causes it to happen. Listen to this, Job. Stand and consider the wonders of God. Do you know how God establishes them, and makes the lightning of his clouds to shine? Do you know about the hovering of the clouds, the wonders of one who is perfect in knowledge, you whose garments are hot when the land is still because of the south wind? Can you, with him, spread out the skies, strong as a cast metal mirror? Teach us what we are to say to him. We cannot present our case because of darkness. Shall it be told him that I would speak? Or should a man say that he would be swallowed up? Now people do not see the light which is bright in the skies. But the wind has passed and cleared them. From the north comes golden splendor. Around God is awesome majesty. The Almighty, we cannot find him. He is exalted in power and he will not violate justice and abundant righteousness. Therefore people fear him. He does not regard any who are wise of heart. God speaks now to Job. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens the divine plan by words without knowledge? Now tighten the belt on your waist like a man, and I shall ask you, and you inform me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who set its measurements? Since you know. Or who stretched the measuring line over it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who enclosed the sea with doors when it went out from the womb, bursting forth. When I made a cloud its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling bands, and I placed boundaries on it and set a bolt and doors, and I said, As far as this point you shall come, but no farther. And here your proud waves shall stop. God's mighty power. Have you ever in your life commanded the morning, and made the dawn know its place, so that it would take hold of the ends of the earth, and the wicked would be shaken off from it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and they stand out like a garment. Their light is withheld from the wicked, and the uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea, and walked in the depth of the ocean? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, and have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you understood the expanse of the earth? Tell me, if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light? And darkness, where is its place, that you would take it to its territory, and discern the paths to its home? You know, for you were born then, and the number of your days is great. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow, and have you seen the storehouses of the hail, which I have reserved for a time of distress, for a day of war and battle? Where is the way that the light is divided, and the east wind scattered on the earth? Who has split open a channel for the flood, and a way for the thunderbolt, to bring rain on a land without people, on a desert without a person in it, to satisfy the waste and desolate land, and to make the seeds of grass to sprout? Does the rain have a father? Or who has fathered the drops of dew? From whose womb has come the ice? And the frost of heaven, who has given it birth? Water becomes hard like stone, and the surface of the deep is imprisoned. Can you tie up the chains of the Pleiades, or untie the cords of Orion? Can you bring out a constellation in its season, and guide the bear with her satellites? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens, or do you establish their rule over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds, so that an abundance of water will cover you? Can you send flashes of lightning? so that they may go and say to you, Here we are. Who has put wisdom in the innermost being, or given understanding to the mind? Who can count the clouds by wisdom, and pour out the water jars of the heavens, when the dust hardens into a mass and the clods stick together? Can you hunt the prey for the lioness, or satisfy the appetite of young lions? 
when they crouch in their hiding places and lie in wait in their lair? Who prepares feed for the raven when its young cry to God and wander about without food? God speaks of nature and its beings. Do you know the time the mountain goats give birth? Do you observe the carving of the deer? Can you count the months they fulfill? Or do you know the time they give birth? They kneel down, they deliver their young, they get rid of their labor pains. Their offspring become strong, they grow up in the open field. They leave and do not return to them. Who sent the wild donkey out free? And who opened the bonds of the swift donkey? To whom I gave the wilderness as his home, and the salt land as his dwelling place? He laughs at the turmoil of the city, he does not hear the shouting of the taskmaster. He explores the mountains of his pasture, and searches after every green thing. Will the wild bull be willing to serve you, or will he spend the night at your feeding trough? Can you tie down the wild bull in a furrow with ropes, or will he plough the valleys after you? Will you trust him because his strength is great, and leave your labour to him? Will you have faith in him that he will return your grain and gather it from your threshing floor? The wings of the ostrich flap joyously, with the pinion and feathers of love, for she abandons her eggs to the earth and warms them in the dust, and she forgets that a foot may crush them, or that a wild animal may trample them. She treats her young cruelly, as if they were not hers. Though her labor is for nothing, she is unconcerned. Because God has made her forget wisdom, and has not given her a share of understanding. When she rushes away on high, she laughs at the horse and his rider. Do you give the horse his might? Do you clothe his neck with a mane? Do you make him leap like locusts? His majestic snorting is frightening. He pours in the valley, and rejoices in his strength. He goes out to meet the battle. He laughs at fear and is not dismayed. And he does not turn back from the sword. The quiver rattles against him, the flashing spear and javelin. He races over the ground with a roar and fury, and he does not stand still when he hears the sound of the trumpet. As often as the trumpet sounds he says, Aha! And he senses the battle from afar, and the thunder of the captains and the war cry. Is it by your understanding that the hawk soars, stretching his wings toward the south? Is it at your command that the eagle flies high, and makes his nest on high? He dwells and spends his nights on the cliff, on the rocky cliff, an inaccessible place. From there he tracks food. His eyes look at it from afar. His young ones also lick up blood greedily. And where the slain are, there he is. Job says what can I say? Then the Lord said to Job, Will the fault finder contend with the Almighty? Let him who rebukes God give an answer. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am insignificant. What can I say in response to you? I put my hand on my mouth. I have spoken once, and I will not reply. Or twice, and I will add nothing more. God questions Job. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind and said, Now tighten the belt on your waist like a man. I will ask you, and you instruct me. Will you really nullify my judgment? Will you condemn me so that you may be justified? Or do you have an arm like God, and can you thunder with a voice like His? Adorn yourself with pride and dignity, and clothe yourself with honor and majesty. Let out your outbursts of anger, and look at everyone who is arrogant, and humble him. Look at everyone who is arrogant, and humble him, and trample down the wicked where they stand. Hide them together in the dust. Imprison them in the hidden place. Then I will also confess to you, that your own right hand can save you. God's power shown in creatures. Behold, behemoth, which I made as well as you. He eats grass like an ox. Behold, his strength in his waist, and his power in the muscles of his belly. He hangs his tail like a cedar. The tendons of his thighs are knit together. His bones are tubes of bronze. His limbs are like bars of iron. He is the first of the ways of God. Let his maker bring his sword near. Indeed the mountains bring him food, and all the animals of the field play there. He lies down under the lotus plants, in the hiding place of the reeds in the marsh. The lotus plants cover him with shade. The willows of the brook surround him. If a river ages, he is not alarmed. He is confident, though the Jordan rushes to his mouth. Can anyone capture him when he is on watch? Can anyone pierce his nose with barbs? God's power shown in creatures. Can you drag out Leviathan with a fishhook, and press down his tongue with a rope? Can you put a rope in his nose, and pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he make many pleas to you, or will he speak to you gentle words? Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Will you play with him as with a bird, and tie him down for your young girls? Will the traders bargain for him? Will they divide him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoons, 
or his head with fishing spears? Lay your hand on him. Remember the battle. You will not do it again. Behold, your expectation is false. Will you be hurled down even at the sight of him? No one is so reckless that he dares to stir him. Who then is he who opposes me? Who has been first to give to me, that I should repay him? Whatever is under the entire heaven is mine. I will not be silent about his limbs, or his mighty strength, or his graceful frame. Who can strip off his outer covering? Who can pierce his double armor? Who can open the doors of his face? Around his teeth there is terror. His strong scales are his pride, locked as with a tight seal. One is so close to another that no egg can come between them. They are joined one to another. They clasp each other and cannot be separated. His sneezes flash forth light, and his eyes are like the eye of dawn. From his mouth go burning torches. Sparks of fire leap forth. From his nostrils smoke goes out as from a boiling pot and burning reeds. His breath sets coals aglow, and a flame goes forth from his mouth. In his neck dwells strength, and dismay leaps before him. The folds of his flesh are joined together, firm and immovable on him. His heart is as firm as a stone, and as firm as a lower millstone. When he rises up, the mighty are afraid. Because of the crash and they are bewildered. The sword that reaches him cannot prevail, nor the spear, the dart, or the javelin. Here against iron as straw, bronze as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Slink stones are turned into stubble for him. Clubs are regarded as stubble. He laughs at the rattling of the javelin. His underparts are like sharp pieces of pottery. He spreads out like a threshing sledge on the mud. He makes the depths boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a jar of ointment. Behind him he illuminates a pathway. One would think the deep to be grey-haired. Nothing on earth is like him, one made without fear. He looks on everything that is high. He is king over all the sons of pride. Job's Confession Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things, and that no plan is impossible for you. Who is this who conceals advice without knowledge? Therefore I have declared that which I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I do not know. Please listen, and I will speak. I will ask you, and you instruct me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. But now my eye sees you. Therefore I retract, and I repent, sitting on dust and ashes. God is displeased with Job's friends. It came about after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Elipaz that my night, my wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends. Because you have not spoken of me what is trustworthy, as my servant Job has. Now therefore, take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up a burnt offering for yourselves, and my servant Job will pray for you. For I will accept him so as not to do with you as your foolishness deserves, because you have not spoken of me what is trustworthy, as my servant Job has. So Elipaz that Monite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zephar the Naamathite went and did as the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job. God restores Job's fortunes. The Lord also restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends, and the Lord increased double all that Job had. Then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all who had known him before came to him, and they ate bread with him in his house. And they sympathized with him and comforted him for all the adversities that the Lord had brought on him. And each one gave him a piece of money, and each a ring of gold. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had fourteen thousand and sheep, six thousand camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Xiah, and the third Karin Hapuch. In all the land no women were found as beautiful as Job's daughters. And their father gave them inheritances among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years, and saw his sons and his grandsons, four generations. And Job died, an old man and full of days.